Blog Talk Radio. This is Heart to Heart Talk Radio, part of the Enlightenment Evolution Network. I am your host, Daniel Scranton. For the next hour or so, please listen with your heart. Hi everyone, this is Daniel, and this is Heart to Heart Talk Radio, part of the Enlightenment Evolution Network. And as part of the network, I would like to announce that my views, the views of my guests, even the views of my callers, do not reflect or do not... I I really have to get this disclaimer down because I just stumble over it every time, not really sure exactly how to legally word something that makes it so that the Enlightenment Evolution Network is not responsible for any of the stuff that goes on on my show legally. So that's what I'm trying to say. (laughs) We're unattached. You can't sue them if you want to sue someone. (laughs) Oh, God. Um, Today is Monday, uh, December 15th, 2014. And as I said, my name is Daniel. My guest's name is Ruth Alon. And Ruth is a channeler who I've, just recently become familiar with through Facebook, and we sort of uh, hang out in the same spiritual groups on Facebook, and that's how Ruth and I uh, began to know each other. But what's really exciting for me about a show like tonight is that I get to get to know Ruth through my show, so all of this is very real. Um, I know very little about her, and I get to ask questions And you guys get to listen in and hear uh, all the exciting stuff about Ruth and her journey and her work uh, just at the same time that I do. So I'm going to take Ruth and put her on the air right now and introduce her. Mm -hmm. This is Ruth. There she is. Hi, Ruth. Yes, right here. (laughs) Here here you are. Yes, Um, I'm right here. We were just talking... uh, before we came on the air with all of you about where Ruth is from because I, just looking at your picture, I just thought, she looks like she's from Europe somewhere. Like she came over here at some point, but no, you were born in Los Angeles. What part of Los Angeles were you born in? Oh, okay. I was born, (laughs) funny, European. Um, I was born in the Valley, San Fernando Valley. Uh Uh-huh. So, so yeah. I grew up there, and I, I, I lived the first forty-three years of my life in Southern California. Wow! And I just moved from Southern California. And the one year that I spent since nineteen ninety-seven, the one year that I spent where I wasn't in Southern California, I was right down the street from where you are now, in Oregon. Yep. So, um, so that's kind of funny. So we have, we have some <laughs> geographical locations in common here. Um, yeah, that's uh, all right, synchronicities. So, yeah, I like it. So I've yeah. noticed... The, okay, I don't want to get ahead of myself too much here because I like to start at the beginning. So at, for, for me, the beginning is tell me about growing up in Southern California. What was your upbringing like? What, what was the... Uh, what was the talk around your house about uh, spirituality or religion or atheism or what was what was going on with you and your what and, and how was your re- reaction to all of whatever was going on in your house? <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. I most people that I know on Facebook already know this, but I'll go over it for all the new people. That um, I grew up in a violent household. It was abusive, oh. yes, and I um, I suffered from sexual abuse many times and um, other violent abuse, and I grew up on, under a guise of shame, and uh, I was raised Baptist, and or also, well, Baptist and or Foursquare, which is another way of, way of saying Baptist, anyway, Southern Baptist. Oh. And okay. yeah, and the, I spent my whole life trying to get out of the reality I was in. So my so what I did was um, 
I started, because of religion and everything, I was denying all of my, um, let's say, spiritualness, all my psychic abilities. So yeah. I, yeah, I tried to, I just associated myself psychically many, many times during childhood. Um, it, and I have had those experiences and remembered them throughout my life. So it felt like I didn't remember my mm-hmm. psychic experiences. It's just that um, I denied that they were part of me. I thought they were part of the devil and all this sort of thing. And anyway, oh. so I, <laughs> yeah, at 16, oh, I, yes, well, at 16, I, because um, I was trying to run away from reality, run away from my life, get away from all those people and all that kind of stuff, I, um, I turned my back on uh, religion and uh, and my family, pretty much. So I decided um, to go my own way. And now I know I was supposed to do that, that, that all that stuff that happened to me in my childhood, it was all um, like the motivating factor for me to get to this psychic part of myself. And mm-hmm. I didn't have the ability to acknowledge all of the um, psychic abilities that I had back then. So it, it was just... Today, I understand it's just the path I took. It's I understand when people tell me they live in, um, you know, uh, violent situations or relationships or something like that. I have a lot of empathy for that because I've been there. I totally get it. Mm. So when I write about that stuff, I really know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Anyways, so I um, mm. so I hit adulthood and I have tried. Just about every single religion, I tried to be a witch. I tried to be all these. I tried to be Buddhist, an atheist. I tried to be Jewish. Mm-hmm. I tried to be everything, and um, I even mm-hmm. tried to be. I went back to school, so I, in university, I was trying to be an intellectual, and still running away from my ability. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, and then uh, the, everything just sort of fell apart at about. Um, let's say, let's say 40, it just sort of fell apart. And then um, I went through like a depressive sort of period and then um, uh, circumstances just had it, but we came up to Portland and uh, we moved up here and we were homeless up here. And um, anyways, all those situations just sort of played out and I was searching and searching I've been searching my whole adulthood to try and figure out like what's wrong with me how do I fix myself so that I can live in this world comfortably and all that kind of stuff and um, through that search I found uh, I found many authors like um, Dyer and all the rest of them but I also Mm -hmm. found the Secret, and then I found Abraham Hicks, and then mm-hmm. through them I found Seth, and then um, Seth introduced me to my psychic self, pretty much. Mm. <laughs> so well, reintroduced you, right? <laughs> <laughs> or or allowed that part of you to come out, come out and play. Yes, I was. Um, I was auto writing um all my life but I didn't know what it was. So I was uh writing and everything and then auto writing is like um you're writing and sometimes I have like um two words in my head and I write them down and then maybe two more or three more words write them down. And then mm-hmm. when you get done with all the writing, all you know is the last three words that you put down on the page. And that's what I was doing. I've been doing that for my whole mm. life, just mm. writing what comes to me. And then um, I would read it back, and it didn't look like I was writing. It didn't look like my words. It didn't look like I was doing it at all. So I was just using that like it was mine and that I didn't really know myself or it was another mm. um, creative thing or whatever. And I figured out with Seth that it was, that was auto writing, and then, um, well, when I went on Facebook, 
Well, okay. Yeah. I found Seth in 2009, and then I was on mm-hmm. Facebook by 2010, and then I found um, groups and stuff, and I was figuring out what channeling was because I never knew what it was. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. be, so before Jane, I really didn't know what channeling was or who was doing it, and um, so I found that out. And then I thought, well, the auto writing then is channeling, and then, I mean, there was more to all that. I was, um, let's see, I was I was trying to make myself, like, good or um, not mm-hmm. evil or something like that. And I found that um, that was just my belief, so I let it go. It took, like, maybe three years to let that go, but... I let it go finally, and then I accept my spontaneous life, and that is what I've been doing for about a year maybe or two years, something like that. Mm-hmm. And that's really harder. That's really harder than you think because it's not like mm-hmm. you're not just like flowing into your life and accepting things that are happy and, you know, like just skipping through your life and everything. That's not what spontaneous life is. It's your, it's accepting everything that comes to you, even the bad stuff. And even yeah. like, yeah, when you're like, when my internet was shut off because we didn't have money to pay the bill, you don't want to mm. accept that. So you fight that and you want to change it and you want to mm-hmm. fix it and fix it and fix it. But I had to just accept that that's what's going on. And right. <laughs> that, that kind of a, stuff. I had when, an incident about a week ago where I was sitting in a, in a tide pool here and I had put my phone way back, like, you know, 20, 30 feet back from where I was in my shoe mm-hmm. on top of a rock. And, you know, this huge couple of waves come in and and, and I'm looking back and I'm like, uh-oh. And before you know it, the shoe is floating. And so I lost my phone for a few days and what I, re- you know, I now I'm using Lana's phone. She kind of gifted me her cell phone, and she's gonna get one at some point <laughs> to replace it. Um, right. But the the cool part about about that was I was noticing before this happened the dependency that I had. Now, I don't know if it was a, de- a dependency or just like this tendency to keep looking at my phone, like constantly be on Facebook and and taking pictures and that you know, and all that stuff so that I wasn't you know, I'd be walking my dog at night and just be like looking at my phone the whole time. <laughs> and, you know, having a few days without a phone is kinda of great because it really it really helped me realize like, oh I I can live without this phone. Like it's not it wasn't yes. so bad, like that. I just, I, I, I couldn't stand not having it, and um, but it really helps you, I think, to put your focus on other things when those things, you know, like internet get, uh, you know, removed from your experience. However, they get removed, you know. So. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. It all serves yeah, but ev- us some, in some way. Yes, everyone is going to get a different meaning from like losing a phone so Mm -hmm. so each yeah each person search searches on um, books and online and on tv and everything so Mm -hmm. they can find the meaning of something that is the same of another person because they don't accept their individuality they don't accept their Mm -hmm. you know their who you are that they don't accept that and um and that's what Jen is trying to do is help others, help beings that are here in the human experience accept who they really are. And that will, um, it doesn't bring happiness to your life as you think it might. Because we're not, when you mm-hmm. are enlightenment, when you have an enlightenment, you don't search for happiness in every single thing. Happiness is just one moment and then you will have more moments, mm-hmm. and and you just accept everything because everything 
has a meaning, you would not get the same meaning from happiness that you would get from anger or another really bad experience. You would never get that meaning from happiness or joy, and you will never get the same meaning from other uh, other experience for, that another person gets. So when I lost my Internet, I had to go out and find Wi-Fi. I had to go out into the world and get out of my house. I had to get it out mm. of my isolation in order to get with other people. Mm. And that was that's a really hard thing for me to do. <laughs> yeah. So I wouldn't have done that if I didn't lose my Internet. Exactly. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because they've been, you know, when you have, um, but they're not exactly voices, okay, but when you have people talking to you and your beings talking to you in your head, you're, and you get intuitions and everything, and then, you know, to go outside, to get into the sun, to get around other people, to do stuff, do stuff, I just fight that all the time. I've been fighting it. Yeah. 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 Because, I know what you mean. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel um a lot of times uh like between my, you know, the beings that I that I have available uh-huh. to me and the my wife and three cats and dog, it's like uh you know, do do we really ever need to socialize to like get out there in the world and mix it up with other people? I mean, sometimes I feel like, like, I don't really have any friends. Like, <laughs> not fr- Like, I have friends, but I don't know people that I go. Especially, if we just moved here too. Yes. So that that That's... kind of compounds it, you know. But we are we are attempting to make plans with people that we we know are, you know, we feel good around. But you know, but th- there is that thing where it's like when you get your your peeps with you, you know, your non physical peeps, it's kinda of like you never feel alone, you never feel lonely and it's like you you couple that with the contact you can have through Facebook with other people and it's like it it does kind of eliminate that need to be in face to face contact with people in your immediate community, I think. Yes. So Yes, yeah. it does it does. But uh that contact is probably sometimes the first contact with other people and then people get stuck in that because they okay when you take one step into your life and you think that you're living your life but you've only taken one step into it you're mm-hmm. um you're not actually living spontaneously you're living at mm-hmm. that one step at that you have one foot into a life with other people and your experience and then the other part of your life you're trying to save yourself from bad experience you're trying to save yourself from the experience that might be bad so you save yourself from that instead of um trying to live all of your emotions and live all of your life and mm-hmm. accept all of your experience and um flow is more than just um walking a path a flow flow is um, letting your emotions flow, letting your energy flow to other people mm-hmm. and not being scared that that energy that's coming back to you is going to hurt you because it can't. You only believe that it can, and that's why it hurts. But sometimes it hurts so that you can see that your experience, that you have to find meaning for it. I can't tell you what your meaning is if that experience coming back at you hurts. I can't tell you what that meaning is. And even Jen isn't going to tell you what the meaning is in your experience. They pretty much tell you that um, this is where you find it, these are your beliefs that are attached to it, and this is the direction you follow in order to find it. But they can't even tell you what the meaning is because it changes every second, because it's not the same as it was yesterday, because it's not the same as everyone else. So. Right. Mm. So if you're listening to us online right now, we're going to uh Ruth is Ruth's gonna take calls and she's um 
she's going to channel uh, Jen or Emmanuel or one of her other guides there uh, mm-hmm. if you have questions for them. Uh, so we're going to get to that portion of the program soon enough, but I just wanted to put it out there for anyone who's listening online. If you want to call in, it's 347 308 Eight seven eight eight, and if you're on hold right now, listening on your phone, you can always hit the number one on your keypad, and then I'll see a little question mark come up, <laughs> and then I'll know mm-hmm. that you want to ask a question. Have you done a radio program before? Have you been on Philip's show? Uh, no, not before Philip's show. Um, Philip's show. Oh, was you have been first. on Philip's show then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Sure. So. Yeah, I'll tell you that I'll tell everybody else that the I started um uh verbally channeling as opposed to hand channeling or writing or any yeah. of that. I started yeah, I started verbally channeling um November of 2013. And yep. I so I've been doing it since then and uh, it's changed over time. So in the beginning, when mm-hmm. you start channeling, it's it's like um, running a Mack truck into um, yep. into a wall. Yeah, you're just going as fast as you can. You're doing it every second of the day. You just keep going and going, and eventually you hit that wall that says that says slow down. This isn't. You don't have to get it all out. It's not like a there's right. not a well that you're going to one dry or anything like that. It's continuous, but yeah. it doesn't. It doesn't have to be constant. It doesn't have to be every day. And people channel differently. So yep, um, for I, sure. I go through, yes, for sure. I go through an ebb and flow of like times where I'm channeling all the time. And really that has to do with my state of mind. It has to do with, um, well, I'm always open, but they respond sometimes to questions in my environment or sometimes they respond to a TV show or a cable show. Sometimes it's the Facebook. Sometimes it's in a book. Um, sometimes it's in the mail. It just sometimes it's an interaction with another person, and they respond to that. And I just um, turn on my tape recorder and go. And uh, but people ch- people channel differently. And in the last say couple months or something, they've slowed down quite a bit on the information that comes through me and really what's coming through me now is the books that I'm writing, um, response to people in their, um, the renderings and the sessions that they give. And, uh, um, they, there's not a lot that they think that, that we have to know. In fact, I don't think that they really respond, um, I don't know, like, they're not trying to tell us what to do. They're responding right. to our own questions. Yeah. Right, right. So have you, are you self-publishing your books? Well, yes. I'm I'm writing them, and I'm, uh, they told me to be open about publishing them, and um, I'm not, I don't mm-hmm. know how to sub, uh, you know, self-publish, but they told me that will open when the time is, and I, you know, have to trust that, and that's one of the hardest things to do because I want to know everything having to do with it. Like, if I'm going to spend the time writing this, then shouldn't I know how it's published? (laughs) Yeah, right. Yeah, so I just have to – and have you – this is the hardest thing to do is to write. I channel the material. I transcribe it. I put it – you know, in writing, and then I have go over it and write it. But every time I go over it and I'm reading it in order to fix it and stuff, fix it grammatically and all that, um, I'm learning it as I'm writing it because this is all new to me. Yeah. These aren't these aren't like beliefs that I've changed or um, or even things that I've considered about your psyche or your experience or your life or your emotions or whatever it is, I haven't done this. So it's like, um, it's, it's difficult as a writer to write about something that you don't know about. I don't know if that's even, I don't know if that's even possible. I get, I get that. I get what you mean, especially with the, with the editing part. Um, cause like, yes. um, when you're editing, 
if you have to edit for grammar, that must be tough. I, I guess yeah. you know I used to work as a as a writer and I used to work as an editor, and I I wonder if that's part of why I had that phase of my life was so that I when I channeled I would channel the material you know it would come out so that it would it would flow and it would you know be kind of polished as it came out because I you know the yeah, only the- thing I do yeah it's like add a comma or something when I when I proofread it you know yeah that's so. that's like the daily channeling is just like that but for some reason yeah. when they um when they do the book writing it's like I, they're leaving it open for me to um add my own experience and when it came to writing a chapter on abundance i'm like um yeah. i really don't know about that one that i'm going to have to take a few months on that one cuz i really don't get it <laughs> and it's just that you was know, hard for really, me to do it's really funny you know the book that Seth yeah uh you know wrote through jane the one on health she was mm-hmm. in a hospital bed with rheumatoid arthritis you know curled up in a ball as she was channeling the book on health so yeah i mean i i sometimes feel like the thing that we need to learn the most is what is going to come through us and then people who are going to be attracted to our work are going to have the same issues that we have you know and yep. uh yeah it's all it's all beautifully orchestrated like that so, yeah i think that one one of the hardest things for rob to do was probably to edit the material edit Seth's material on the way towards health but also to yeah. not not try to pressure jane into accepting health not to pressure not to pressure mm-hmm. her into, you know, change your belief about this, change your belief about that. I think we've all done that. We find beliefs and we want other people to find that belief in themselves so we can, refer, you know, affirm that we've found that and we've changed that. So, anyway, the, I think it was harder. It's harder when you, um, when you edit the material and you want the person who's ha- I don't know how to I don't know how to say this exactly. When you when you find the the person okay, let's let Jen say it. <laughs> when you find ahead, the person yeah. who yeah, when you find the person that wants the material you want to push it to them, you want to give it to them, you want to push it down their throat. And because you want them to change you want them to change because you love them or you you think they would be happier. And really, it is yourself that wants to be happier. Yes, it is mm-hmm. difficult to write material. And mm-hmm. do so in this new way. But others have done this. And they have mm-hmm. done this so many times through your history and other histories they have done this so many times it is just the ideas that this is different mm-hmm. <laughs> and this is a spontaneous life mm-hmm. okay and there you go <laughs> that it's yeah. yeah the feeling is that this is a spontaneous life this is what you go with this is the new experiences that you go with and uh yeah <laughs> if anyone understood Wonderful. that, <laughs> okay. I, I think it was great. I think it was great. I I want to um, I want to ask you about your evolution now as a channeler because um, when you know when you said November of 2013, I actually thought, oh, I thought it was even less time for you since you started. So you you first started. Uh, channeling and Jen is the one that you started channeling first, correct? Uh, yes. As a group, and, rather. Yes, it's a group of beings. Yes, it's a group mm-hmm. of beings. So the Jen group includes Seth, 
and Emmanuel oh. and and Gerard and a whole group of beings that um, some of them are really um, this doesn't well I'll describe them but this doesn't mean that they describe themselves this way but they're really old some of them and some of them are really close to our experience really close to our human experience to mm-hmm. just to saying they're close to our world doesn't mean they're close to all worlds. They're close to all probabilities. They're, um, anyways, but some of them are really mm-hmm. old. Some of them I have never met. And then some of them, um, well, Seth, in, Seth, um, well, <laughs> he, okay, Seth invited me to Jen, and then, because Seth was part of Jen, and then um, Jen told me who they were, and I didn't know, they gave me their name, and I didn't know who they were until probably, like, two months later. I wasn't presented any of them. So Seth is one of them, Emmanuel. I was, um, um, well, Seth told me about Emmanuel. He presented Emmanuel to me and Gerard, and uh, it was weird because... Uh, Emmanuel came to me as Manuel, and I'm like, I looked at him. He looked at me, and it was, um, mm-hmm. well, it was an out, out of, out of, um, out of body experience. Anything I talk about meeting mm-hmm. other people or something like that, it's all an out mm-hmm. of uh, body experience. But uh, he wow. said he was Manuel, and he looked at me, and I go, and I just knew that it was Emmanuel yeah. because I've never felt yeah. that kind of love from someone. Oh. So, so and Emmanuel is really close to um, our human, ex- like very close. Like he's yeah. really, yeah, about all of the suffering and us not suffering and and all that kind of thing. So, and it's the same um, Emmanuel from Emmanuel's books, right? Yes, yes, same Emmanuel. Yeah, yeah. I uh, and it's funny because I I thought the I found Seth through Emmanuel because I read, someone told me, oh, you like channel material? And I didn't even think of myself as a person who was reading channel material, but I was reading the Conversations with God books, which are, you know, automatic, which were automatic writing by Neil Donald Walsh. And that, you know, that's a form of channeling. So, so my very wise, very spiritual friend said, if you like channel material, you should check out Emmanuel's books. I read the Emmanuel's books, and then on the back of one of the books, there was a, a quote from someone saying, you know, not since the Seth material or something like that, and that's how I found Seth. So I actually have, a, you know, that was introduced to <laughs> Seth through Emmanuel. So that's kind of funny. Yes. That was when I was in yeah. Oregon. All that happened. Oh. Yeah. yeah Big, I mean, huge awakening for me in Oregon. Huge, no, yeah. Yes, because I think that there is some sort of psychic vortex here in Oregon. Mm. Mm. I mean, it really is going to yeah. happen anywhere. It really would happen anywhere because yeah. it's more to do with you. But we, like, um, we believe that it happens. There is some kind of vortex here in Oregon that. It just happens a lot in here because we believe it will because we come here for that mm-hmm. because all of our other selves believe that it does, and then just mm-hmm. recently, just just in, just for like general information, really, recently they told us and I became aware that there are we believe that like we have a spiritual personality, and we we have an oversoul, and most of us believe we have one oversoul and we have one personality and then we have all these different selves that our personality is in and that gives way for our other lives and other probabilities and all that but we Mm -hmm. indeed have more than one personality we have more than one identity more than one oversoul we don't just have one oversoul it's called Mm -hmm. an oversoul because whoever labeled it that but we have more than just one we have so many, it's innumerable, and it's like the extent of 
the metaphysical and the extent of the multidimensional personality or the multidimensional self is like, uh, it just gets more complex and more Mm -hmm. possibilities that open up. The more you understand about yourself and the more you live spontaneously. And living spontaneously, by the way, expressing your emotion fully, discovering who you really are, and living with love for yourself, that is an accepting all of your experience and living all of your experience. That Those things are um, how you find out more of your multidimensional self. And those things loosen your limits that you have on yourself. And um, one of the byproducts of being a physical channel for me, and not for other channels, but for me, is living spontaneous like that uh, means that I accept all my dream life is valid. Mm-hmm. And my experience then sort of, um, I have a fuller experience. My dream life is part of my ex- physical experience. It's like it all mm-hmm. sort of blends together and I become this whole person where my metaphysical life is as valid and as real as the physical life, and really they, um, it's not that they complement each other, but that that accepting everything about yourself is valid means that everything becomes more real. Everything becomes more vivid. Have you ever had an experience in your, um, in your physical life where you felt like you were dreaming, but that you were really, really lucid? Like, and then on the other hand, in my did physical you ever have life, a... yeah, yeah. Um, my, my physical life, did I ever feel? No, I don't. I don't think I have ever been that close to feeling that that I uh, that I like. Well, am I dreaming or not dreaming when I'm awake? But I, I will tell you this about the what you're saying about okay. dreams and reality. Um, sometimes Lana. My wife will have a dream where I've done something in the dream and she'll just be mad at me when we wake up in the morning. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> and then she'll tell me like later in the afternoon about the dream and, and I'll, oh, that's why you were so bitchy this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. Well, that's because, you know, the dreams also are symbolic, just like our, our physical reality is symbolic yeah. and our dream life is symbolic. So, you, yeah. I mean, yes, there's, you know, she get, gets angry in a dream at you, and then, but there's <laughs> meaning in that. It's not as, yeah. <laughs> it's not as, um, <laughs> right, it's, it's not as, on, yeah, it, it, it's not as, on the dream reality, it's not as easily dismissible, I think, as we, we once thought it was, some of us, anyway. Certainly, Seth had a lot to say about the dream reality. Mm-hmm. That, was, that was a big focus of Seth. Um, so, we had you have some yes. callers here with uh, with questions, and uh, so we have two hands up right now. So, why don't we take some some calls and some questions and see what uh, other people want to bring to the conversation here? So, okay. oh, now there's three. Okay, so 910 area code. I'm going to bring you on the air with us. Hello. Hi. Hi there. Hi, guys. My Hi. Name is John. Hi, my this name is Philip? John. Hi. Um, and I, are you guys taking questions? Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Um. Well, it's been a very up and down year. Um, and I seem to have fallen into a slump of depression. Mm-hmm. And I'm just wondering, I, I'm looking for inspiration mainly. So that is your question. You're wondering about your episode of depression? No, I'm looking for inspiration. 
I'm your looking depression. For a, I'm looking for a way out of is, the depression. Yes, the depression is your inspiration. This is a common idea that you are stuck in a mode, stuck in an emotion. And you are never stuck there. You are never wallowing in a state of depression. Depression is a motivation motivation. It is a motivative emotion for you to express yourself in another way. You have gone through this path. This emotion, the depression that you feel is reaching to another experience and you are not accepting that experience. We cannot tell you what that experience is for you, but that you are in this emotion so that you can find that new path, you can find that new experience. The way you find that is you accept all your experience at this moment. You accept all your emotion in your life at this moment. And with that, a door will open. And that open door will take you to another path. It will take you to another emotion. As you accept those things in your life right now that are right in front of you, that are inside of you right now, some of you will find sadness, and some of you will find anger. We want you to know that that emotions are fleeting. Those emotions fleet through you when you express them, not hurting others with them, but express them into a wall or a pillow, however you would like. Express them, they will go through you very fast, and you will be rid of them. They will do what they need to do to take you to your new door. They will take you to your new experience. Now, it will help if you listen to your intuitions. It will help you if you accept all of your experience. Now, for an example, when your phone rings, answer it. When your door knocks, answer it. When your alarm goes off in the morning, wake up. This is all you must do. It's very simple. Your emotions are fleeting. The depression is motivation that you need to find your new experience. You have your legs. You can walk into your new experience. You have your energy, your body, and yourself. Believe who you are is divine, and who you are is love. And with that, you will find your energy to go forward. Your depression that you have been through is not bad. It is not your fault. And it is not wrong in any way. This depression will take you to your new path, and that is what it was supposed to do. And because of this, you should value it. And that's it. Wonderful. Well, thank you, uh, caller, for calling in. I I put you back on hold because uh, the line was a little noisy. There was some music in the background, and uh, it was scratchy at times. So uh, I hope you got all that and are absorbing all that. It was wonderful. I really love that whole idea that not only do we accept the state of being that we find ourselves in, if that's depression, uh, for instance, but that we see it as something, as a as a springboard that's uh, that's taking us to something else, and I, I really love that that whole idea. Yeah. You know, there's we we can often get 
or there's certainly been a tendency in my experience for this idea of, you know, if, if you're depressed or something and something has gone wrong or you're doing something wrong or there's something that you could be doing to get out of it or, you know, there's there's all... because Because there's so much of that in the spiritual realm, the spiritual new age teaching world, whatever you want to call it, of, you know, of the uh, memes and picture quotes out there about, you know, this this and that, about um, being happy and, and things like that. And I think some people can just uh, get down on themselves uh, with all that damn positivity that's out there, you know. <laughs> right, yes. So. People just start running away from themselves, <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I love that. I love that answer. And I'm going to yes, go that, to our next call. Okay, go Okay, ahead. that what was Jen, by the way. I thought so. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to take the 858 caller, 858 area code, San Diego County. Hello? Hello, Daniel. This uh, is Anya. I thought so. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much for taking my call. You're thank welcome. You. And I've I've loved hearing your story. It, it's beautiful. Um, I have kind of a funny question. <laughs> um, we have a, a a wonder a dear friend Daniel Scranton coming to uh, visit us for a few days. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> while, while we're in Oahu, he's going to fly over and for a few days. And it just recently occurred to me that uh, our daughter is also a, a good friend of Daniel's, but our son and his wife that are also coming to visit with us from Seattle are are really not fans of Abraham. I mean, they don't know Daniel, but um, and I I kind of question their reaction to what you know. Because Daniel might channel for us, and you know, I, I just want, I just want to be natural around my kids. But they've kind of said before, we don't want to hear it. We keep your universe talk to yourself. <laughs> and so wow. I'm just kind of like, yeah. And so now I'm like, okay. So um, Bruce thinks we should tell him ahead about Daniel, and Emily's like, no, 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 let's just surprise him. <laughs> And I, I just feel kind of in this in-between. I want to be comfortable with it. I, I want Daniel to be relaxed and have a good time. And, and them also. I just want to find an easy answer because I know they're going to love Daniel. I know Daniel's going to love them. And I know it will go all right. I just don't know if I should say anything ahead of time or let it play okay, out. They, this is, okay, this is what they're responding with. So you want so very much to make everyone's experience pleasant. But this is not the nature of experience. This is not the nature of differing experience between different individuals. We know that you want everyone to be happy. What you really want, now hear us tell you what you really want, is to feel the peace within yourself, the peace of knowing that you are loved, the peace of knowing to your core that you are valued and that your experience is indeed meaningful, that every emotion that you have is meaningful, that every thought that passes through your intellect is meaningful, and every perception that you make with your ego is meaningful and we say that it is so that you are divine and that you have access to this peace within yourself when you find this when you let go of the walls that keep you from yourself Letting everyone else have their experience will become easy for you. Whether it's an argument, 
or discomfort or happiness, it would all become valuable to you. Now let us some, say some things about all the different speakers and all the different messages and whether you agree with one or another. The very basic answer is they're all saying the same thing. Each one gives a message, the same message, in a different way so another may hear it. If you hear the message that you need to hear, that is all that matters. And give each other the right that is wholly their own to receive the message from another or another. Because you see, all messages from all channelers, all renderings, are all saying the same thing. We, you all take different paths to the same end. You take different paths that take you on a journey that take, you will take to the same place, to yourself. All it is designed to do, all of the messages are designed to take you to who you really are and to the love that you are. I know it doesn't look like that. I know that mm -hmm. when you listened to all the different message, the messages, that they seem quite dissimilar, but they are not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. And you will find in yourself the understanding that all that matters is your connection to yourself. All that matters is how you feel about yourself and whether you acknowledge yourself or not. That is what matters. And when you find that connection, you will find that all of the others play like nice, good girls and boys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell You will me. see the peace in your experience. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yes, there there will be peace on Earth this Christmas. Yes, and um, but peace doesn't mean peace doesn't mean calm and sleeping yes, and right. meditation. It means mm. uh, loving each other, allowing. Yeah. 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 Um, wonderful. Oh, thank you, Anya, for for that wonderful question. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> And I'll, I'll see you soon. See you soon. <laughs> Can't wait. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, me too. Uh, what was really brilliant about that for me, that whole uh, response, was that, you know, Mana posted a video on my wall or timeline or whatever you call it now. Um, mm -hmm. And it was a, a comedy YouTube video of a guy, you know, who talked about how to be super spiritual and, uh, you know, so he was kind of making fun of, of you know, some of the things we do, so, some of the New Ager type stuff that we do. And, and one of the things he did was he, he made himself uh, cut uh, back and forth between himself dressed as like a, you know, uh, with a shirt and tie and with his hair all combed and neat and... and uh, that person, what that person says, and, and presumably a Christian person, and then uh, what the New Age spiritual person says, you know, with the with the long hair down and and the hippie clothes and all that, and and it was pointing out how they're saying the same thing, but with different language, and yes. it, it's it's really really it was really interesting to me to see it like almost to the point where. I, I was just thinking, wow, uh, that is so eerie, you know, <laughs> like we think we're so different and we're just not. And, and it really is just, it's like, what, really, like just the word, you just shift from one word to the to another, to a synonym of, of that word and then 
all of a sudden you have like markedly different belief systems and people thinking that they're so different, but we're really not. You know? Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that was yeah, well, great. Not... I love, love that answer. Yes, and the thank you. And the um, what I have found is that when I went back to the Abraham writings, I yep. found that I would sometimes disagree with what they're saying, but yeah. A lot of the times, it it just seems a lot of what Jen's saying. I get I keep, in other words, Jen says stuff, and then I get validated all over the place. I can get validated through Buddha or Abraham or you or anybody. It just mm-hmm. I get mm-hmm. I get validated everywhere. It just happens, and I think that mm-hmm. that is in direct measure to acknowledging who I really am, and whatever that takes, whether that takes walking out my door and going for a walk or letting go of some of my beliefs or finding out that I like being a girl that I mean there you know there are many levels to finding out who you really are and being who you really are many levels to that the first level for me was being a physical channel that was the first level the next level then the next level there's a there are all the different levels and they're different for everyone. Mhm. Yeah. And it's so true too because a lot of the things that what like I look back now, well not back but I look at other people now and what I see in them sometimes are uh myself and uh, but the the like past version of myself, the version I've already been I've already been through that See, I've been through Christianity where I, you know, I took to, I actually took to it as a kid and as a young adult uh, up until about 18. I, I went to church and I believed and all that stuff, confirmed Catholic. And then I became an atheist. So I had, I've had that experience, you know. Um, yeah. And so, and then became a new ager, whatever that is. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and so I can look at people now and and think like, well, that was me. Like how you know, so like how can I really, how can I really fault someone for being where they are because I've been there. I've I've absolutely, uh, even like you were saying just now about how you can look at some teachings in the New Age spiritual realm and maybe they were teaching that at one time you were 100% in alignment with and now you're kind of like, well, no, I don't really buy into all of this anymore. And and you can use that same sort of like, well, now what? Do I resist it because I'm not totally in alignment with it anymore or do I just accept that that's part of the journey, it's like, of course, it has to exist. It has to be out there as a possibility because all things and all beliefs and all ways of knowing the self have to be. Right. And Well, have you had this experience as a channeler, Daniel? Have you uh, come across, like, a channeling you've done for a person, for a, an individual, and the words come out of your body that really don't have anything to do with your own belief system in other words i don't believe in protection and safety anymore i don't believe that you need to protect Uh yourself or there is a state of safety i don't believe that but i swear i was giving a rendering and that's what came out of my mouth that's what they needed to hear and i was like well i don't believe that anymore how'd that happen (laughs) you know it just came out of my mouth and I, yeah, I went I intellectually. Certainly do. I certainly do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and intellectually, I was like, "No, you can't say that." And they go, "Ah, stop it!" <laughs> like, like instantly, like my intellect wanted to interrupt. Yeah, and I also think that the guides that I channel, or when I'm in that state, I guess I don't know. You know, it's like it's such a blending of me and them that there's so much more 
I think you did you use the word bold before in describing Jen? Was that Oh, say that again? Did you were, did you describe Jen as being bold? Oh, yes, B-O-L-D. they are something. Yes. Yes, yes. So that's they what are. I experienced because because Daniel is not Daniel is not does not speak with that kind of conviction or uh, want to go out on a limb and you know say you know that this past life was where you were a butcher and you know you chopped your thumb off and uh, you know Daniel does not want to say any of that stuff even though I might be getting it sometimes but they're yeah very comfortable very comfortable out there on that limb you know where they could be wrong I guess or you know. Uh huh. Well, they, well, okay. Yes, I'm not. I'm too shy. I really care too much yeah. about what other people think in order to speak my mind. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. But yeah, but when whenever Jen lets go, whenever I let Jen through, and they help people, it always turns out good. I haven't come across any time when it was bad. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. They they know what they're doing and yeah. and um. I I haven't had anybody talk to Vago. Now, Vago is oh. like they're really let's say in the grand scope of all of the beanie, beings in the um non-physical universe, they're the oldest. They're the originating. Mm. They are the ancient. They are mm-hmm. the before they are the beginning of all that is. Let's say but in that realm, you can't say that there's a beginning and end, but you kind of all know what I mean, right? They're really old and really mm-hmm. ancient and really far removed from any human experience. And they haven't talked to anyone directly, um, mostly because they're not connected to our reality in any way. So they have these grand ideas and messages from other realms that they give, but they they don't communicate with humans because uh, I don't think the message would come through like it does with Jen, because Jen's really mm-hmm. close to us, or the parts mm-hmm, of mm-hmm. Jen, the group of beings, some of them are really mm-hmm. close to us and really understand our suffering, it, you know, because Emmanuel understands our suffering, and they they understand where we're at, and how to get us to go to where we need to go. But uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's maybe someday Vago will um, address groups of people or something like that. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that's that's in your future, Ruth. <laughs> yes. Thank yeah, I'm you. going out on a limb. I'm going out on a limb there. <laughs> okay, yeah, we got well, more calls to take. So let me let me get okay. another caller here. You call her, all I see on my screen is the word live or live, L-I-V-E. So I don't know where you're calling from, but hello? Hi, Daniel. It's Roxanne. How are you, sweetie? Oh, hi, hi, Roxanne. Hi, Ruth. Hi, Daniel. Hi. I was like, to hear you. Oh, yeah, it's just uh, that's why I wanted to call. I said I love your voice. I don't think I've heard it before. I don't remember hearing it, and I just I'm enamored with your story. I'm like, oh my god, how beautiful! What a great ascension you've given yourself. <laughs> oh, <Yeah. laughs> thank you. Oh, that wow. was just I was listening to the stories, and then just uh, the the idea of the oversoul and the oversoul oversoul, and the in the just uh, that whole. Thing and I channeled it like I don't know a couple weeks ago, and they threw it in there, and I was like, "Oh wow, what is this?" And I don't understand. And then boom, validation. Thank you. So oh, mm-hmm. thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, just that was just, just yeah, really good stuff that you're bringing. Thank you so much. Oh, oh I don't thank know if anyone's you. told you that lately, but thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I needed that validation. I really needed that. Thank you. Yeah, I know. Yeah, don't we? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I like how you said, you know, they named it at Overcalls because someone called it that. And then, you know, I'm getting these, like, little different channelings that I can't put 
quite together yet and you know the downloads i'm getting and it'll come through when it's the right time on the channeling and then you know i'll go back to listen to it or like you said you go back and read it and you go holy cow you know um Mm -hmm. and you know there's more to the oversoul idea than what we are understanding and they're leading into it a little bit and i was like yeah, so I'm good. I'm good because you know I was like, oh, okay, I got it. And then, and then the spiritual personality—that is so cool. I didn't even think about that. I mean, we're more than one uh-huh. spiritual personality. We're many facets of the diamonds, and yeah, mm. yes. yeah. Doesn't this freaking it, awesome? It just rocks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, mm-hmm. and then and then just um, last week or whatever it was, I went on the out of body experience trip and I met this old woman in this in, like English countryside type thing in this house and this old woman was sitting at this table and she started telling me stuff that didn't make any sense and I she, okay she told me she was Athena and I was her and mm-hmm. I she told me she gave me the idea telling me that I was doing these things but she wasn't going to tell me what I was going to do but I was getting ready for these things. The time was here. The time was here to know, to get the knowledge, and to do. And uh, anyways, I looked her up because I had no idea who she was. And I found out Athena is the goddess Athena, the Greek goddess mm-hmm. Athena. Right. And I didn't know that she comes to people under the guise of an old woman. So oh. It was really strange. I mean, she held my hands and she, I mean, it was oh. really short. It was it was really cool, but I had really no idea. But mm. the synchronicity of the whole thing just yeah. um, floored me. Just like, um, well, I didn't understand until recently how I could be Athena, but I could right. also be this and this and this. How can my sure. personality be Athena, right? But we are right. many dis- many personalities, many different things, many my God, it's so unlimited. It's mind-boggling. <laughs> I know it's a it's a lot to handle. And yes. Wh- what was what was the ancient uh, beginning? What do you call them? Varg Bag? Sorry, what was the name oh, of them? The, you called them Vago. The ancient beings. Vago. Vago. Yes. Yeah. V a g o. Yeah. Vago. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. Because when you said that, it was like ping, and I never deny my pings, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna sit on that name for a little bit. And see what happens. That was very nice. Okay. That, that just like, huh? You know, you get that little, you know, resonation. Like, oh, there's a slipstream. Let's follow that. Uh huh. So, okay. Cool. And Maria yeah. used to call them the ones. The I'm, ones. I'm not sure if she still is, but she called them the ones. So, mm-hmm. uh, oh. you know, people name them different things. So. Yeah, they name Maria. Different yeah, from Facebook. I know. Yeah, I know. Oh yeah, yeah Maria lives in your neck of the woods too, huh? Yeah. 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 Asierno. Up there in Oregon. Asierno. I, I, yes. I can't say it. There, Asierno. There so it is. That's in Arizona. Right. She moved down to, uh, yeah, with, down to AZ. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. She's living close okay. to uh, Ann. Yeah. Yeah, but, okay, this is the deal. When you when you get some of the ancients, let's say, let's call them the ancients, but when you get yeah. connected to them, they come to you, whatever it is, they can throw you off your feet completely. Sure, I mean, literally. sure. They just they just hit you like a freight train, and uh, and it happened to Maria that way too. So it right. Um, they don't. Hmm. For me, they didn't. For me and for her, they didn't name themselves. They, right. Uh, for for me, they said we, we cannot give you a name because we have no name. We don't right. use right. labels like that. So um, right. So I got right. a, I just got an intuition of Vago, and I looked it up. It's Greek or or um we call it really old language. I don't know. Anyways. Sumerian? The, oh, maybe, but not that old. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the one that they use for medical terms. Oh. Anyway. Okay, keep going. I get brain fart or something. It's anyway, all right. So yeah, so it so I looked it up in old languages and it says it's um now I can't think of it. Okay. It's oh, there, a, are some, there are some really interesting definitions online of Vago. <laughs> yeah, Vago. Yeah, I looked it up online, and it says, like, um, a, a transient person or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. 
Yes, because Vago mm-hmm. said that they were, they are everywhere at once. They are all over, mm. and they have been everywhere, and they have lit down into um, human history, not our straight line linear history, but they've been right. in human history many different times and in different ways, and they were here before humans were. So they are, so they're sort of transient. Right. That's what I thought. <laughs> so yeah, I thought, that's-, well, that's a really good descriptive. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. They have one right here. It says, Vago is a person who does not do anything in in the entire day. He does not have to work. Uh, He does not have to go to school. He just is walking the streets. And I was like, okay, that's cool. (laughs) And that's funny. All right. Yeah. Mm, So so the, the learning thing here is, the thing to take away from this is that they come to each individual differently and they come without definition. So... Um, right. You'll mm-hmm. be right. as open as you can possibly be at that moment, and know that when you get mm-hmm. them at that moment, you are really stepping into a new arena. You are yeah. o- more open than you have ever been. Mm-hmm. Right. So. Uh, were you ta- were you thinking of Latin as the language? Yes. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Latin. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Latin. I mm-hmm. it just popped in. Mm-hmm. I got it. Okay. Okay. It's also in Spanish or something. <laughs> right. Yeah. I got the word. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, awesome, Blossom Possum. I just wanted to, again, just send you my eternal love because it was just awesome. And it was so funny. I'm just sitting here, and all of a sudden, I'm looking at Facebook, Daniel Scranton. I said, oh, that's right, Daniel, your show's coming on, yay. So, and then I read what it was, and I was like, oh, Ruth is there, even yayer, you know, so I get bored. So. <laughs> I know, I'm such a good team, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, keep rocking the show, you too. I love you so much, and we'll talk to you on the next show. Yes, Thanks, I got you, Roxanne. Bye, guys. I love you, too. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Okay. So, oh, by the way, um, according to the interweb, Ralph Waldo Emerson was the first one to coin the term oversoul, and it was, I think, used a, a bit uh, by the transcendental authors and poets of that time, you know, 1800s, mm-hmm. I think. Is that 1800s? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, 1840, I think it said, around that time. So, I okay, let me say this. Because, yeah. Okay, let me say what they say about words, and they may come through. It, to, yeah. you know, if I don't do a good enough job, they'll come through. But words are a words have their own power. They have their own energy in the word. When you speak the word, you have this energy that comes with the word that is not the word itself, but the energy is surrounding Mm. that word that you speak, whether you write it Mm. and someone reads it or you speak it and someone hears it. You're getting that word. You're getting the energy that is laced in between and around that word, the energy of that meaning that is more than our cultural meaning that we attach to the word. The meaning of, Mm. let's say, okay, they told me this in response to their books that they're writing. So, Mm-hmm. there's words on the page, but the person gets more than just the words on the page. The person who reads mm-hmm. through, whether they read one paragraph or the full 13, you are, you're getting the words, you're getting mm-hmm. meaning behind the words, you're getting the meaning of the whole book, you're getting mm-hmm. the path that they take you on from chapter 1 to chapter 13. You're getting this um, essence of them as you as you recognize the book and as you recognize the words, as you read them, you're getting all of this energy that is so much more than just our culturally described words and what they mean together or apart. Yeah, and I think that's why when you have someone bringing through a channeled entity, Uh the the entity will come up with a new word for something or use a word that doesn't have a lot of that uh-huh. that well, energy attached to it. So oversoul, so Seth comes along and Seth starts talking about the oversoul, oversoul, oversoul. And that, you know, at the time, that wasn't like that was a word that was being used a lot. In, you know, Right, in, but it's just a word. It's just yeah. a word. And really, as our ideas of that word change and our as 
the let's say as the new age comes about and as we are gaining our new awarenesses and enlightening ourselves or whatever it is or actually acknowledging our multidimensional self and what that means as we're doing that the word oversoul takes on different meaning and it it doesn't mean what it did 200 years ago right or 100 so it doesn't mean the same thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly exactly yeah all right, let's take another call. We got six oh two area code here. Hello, six oh two. Are you Hello. there? Hello. Hi, who's this? Hi, it's it's Anne from C E two. Hi. Hi Anne. Hi. Hi, Hi so nice to talk. Hi Dan. <laughs> Hi. How are it's you doing? Great to hear. I'm doing okay right now. I wanted to ask you. It's sort of along the lines of the first caller because what Jen got me, got me, you know, focused again on kind of like the feelings are the path. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, that's kind of like what I understood in some of what she was saying. I was just wondering if if, if she or anyone else could, could take that a bit deeper and help me understand um, why my separation from my husband is still so deeply painful on a daily basis. Um, it's particularly in the morning. I don't know if that's significant or not. It's not that bad in the evenings. In the afternoons and evenings, it starts to let up. But I, I wondered if there was... I don't know if there was any further insight or they could take it deeper or there was something I was missing or something personally, you know, that, that they could address with me. Mm-hmm. Okay, what they're saying is... Go ahead. The very simple explanation is that you feel the separation, the pain of the separation signifies it and has within it the meaning that you are more separated from yourself. It's quite simple, but the path to get from one to another you think is complicated. You think, well... I have acknowledged such and such of myself and I realize this about myself and I have let go of this belief in the other and I'm doing just fine. But in fact, the pain of the separation of your loved one has meaning within it. It is the painful separation. That emotion tells you if we may be so bold, that you are separated, and the only thing you can be separated from is yourself. The more you connect with who you really are, and yes, there's farther to go with that. There always is. You are still human. Therefore, there is more that you can uncover of yourself. There are more beliefs to drop more ideas to change, more emotion to let out. Other barriers that you must loosen and limits that you must dissolve. As each level you uncover with who you really are and the love that you are, however means that you do this, you will find that the pain of the separation from your loved one decreases, that it ceases to exist, that you will feel fully connected to your loved one. The past, though, is what you believe and what you feel and how connected you are with who you really are. Hmm. The question of who I really am has changed enormously in the past year. Yes, it has. It has and, for many of you. And uh, that that continues to go on. 
I guess some of yes. that is painful. I guess some of that actually is painful. Um, I didn't see that. I didn't see that as being connected to to him. But then, since he crossed over, I found out a whole lot more about who he is, and that was pretty stunning in itself. But it led me back to me, just like you're saying. And honestly, I'm not surprised by what I found out about myself because a lot of it's been coming through for a very long time. I don't know what to do with the information. I don't know. Um, I don't know how that. What? I still don't know what it is that I'm separate from myself about, or I just don't understand that part. I guess. We will give you a clue that your experience, your human experience, the experience of your life, of each of your moments that seem to pass one after another, they are symbolic. And because of this, just like your dreams, they have symbolic meaning. Each of your experiences have symbolic meaning within them and connected to each other. You alone have the power within you to recognize these meanings, to become aware of your experience and what it means to you. These experiences and their connections will tell you what, directly tell you what you feel about yourself. Look where you live. Look at your surroundings. And look at your experience. Accept your awarenesses. And the way you accept your awarenesses is that you express your emotions fluidly, completely. You do not have to protect yourself from your emotions. You do not have to protect yourself from the negative emotion. They are not of that nature. They will not hurt you. They are fleeting and they will flow through you and free you from this idea that you have to run from bad experiences and run from painful feelings. It does feel to me like it's never going to end. I think that is because you are holding on to them. That's because I'm so afraid that it's never going to end. I really, you really, believe, are you telling me there actually is an end to this? That I might actually get to an end to this and still be informed? Hmm. Let us. There are a lot of say, people who say it never ends. Did you know that? Yes. Of course, but we are telling you that they do end. That's what I'm asking. The ending really? of the feeling of the emotion is over for you, but the energy does not end. The energy is free into your world, freed into your experience. The freedom of that opens you up to become aware of the meanings of your experience freedom of your emotions and the fleeting nature of them and not being afraid of them by your experiencing them will reaffirm your connection of the love of who you really are. And that then means that your awarenesses will come quickly. They will be almost immediate. You'll recognize many of the synchronicities. In fact, it will surprise you. And at first, you'll become afraid of them because they will be so numerous. But trust yourself. Trust yourself that you are given your emotions to express them. There is nothing of yourself to be afraid of. We also suggest that you spend more time 
with your inner self and your inner space. More time discovering more about your inner world. And this will also decrease your fear. It will also help to make a decision in this moment, in this exact moment, that fear is not welcome within your being. And we hope that helps. It's not welcome. Yeah, they they said the the fear is not welcome? No, it's not. But it's very strong. The fear that this is never going to end is very strong. The fear that I'm never going to be... um, What I want, Jen, is an awareness that he's not gone. Well, you know, he's still back here. He's not gone, but (laughs) they're not gone. I understand that. I understand that. Fine. Definitely not here. Where I am physically. Well, he is, actually. Not the way I became very accustomed to it. Um, I understand in- I understand what you're saying, but it doesn't it hasn't really made that much of a dent in and I've had constant contact with him since he crossed oh okay, it doesn't, but it doesn't seem to touch this pain. Have you opened yourself up to other energy that besides him? What do you mean? I mean inner energy. I mean inner messages and all. Are you taking I've his... Been deeply, I've, been, I've been in conscious contact with my own source self for 30 years. I yes. can channel it. I can channel yes. it. I can, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. you need to... I think it's within all, your... Within your inner vision, I think you may be contacting other entities, other beings, besides your own source. I think you need to go past that. Besides your late husband, besides your source, I think you need I also, to... I also have contact with four, well, three other lifetimes and another a brother that I share an oversoul-like energy with. Mm-hmm. Who's not human? Um, yes, but what else do yeah. you mean? Well, I mean, I think you need to go. You you need to reach out farther into your multidimensional self, farther than other selves, farther than what you already know. You need to reach out and and you need well drop the fear and take the step. And to take the step on in, in inner reality is easier sometimes than taking the step in physical reality. If you take a step and drop the fear with inner reality and drop your limits within the non-physical realm to new experience, then your physical experience will get better. Your fear, physical experience will change okay. because you'll have dropped the fear. The fear dropping... Um, I think, you see I, think some, I think some of that may have begun in the in experiences that I had have had recently in dreams um, mm-hmm. with doing briefings in huge huge um arena like auditoriums briefings on what we're doing here to unbelievably huge crowds of beings. Um, and also, um, Maria began to channel my husband's energy the other day, and it completely altered my relationship with her and how I feel. I also mm-hmm. had a dream, I also, and because of that experience with her and him, 
and how she experienced him, which was um, quite a surprise to her um, and not a surprise to me because I've been experiencing him after he crossed over as a, an entity far beyond what I ever imagined him to be. Um, <clears throat> and then dreamed that this morning before I woke up, dreamed that same scenario as though the three of us were there presently physically together. Um, so those things are new and different. Is that the kind of thing you're talking about? Because that's the only, that's what's different. And that's only been in the past week and a half, two weeks. Those are the things yeah. that might, will lead me to break down this belief in separation. Is that it? Yes, but the, it's not, it's not really a belief of separation. It's okay. the fear. It's the fear of what you believe about yourself. That's all it is. It's simple. What, I still don't understand that. The fear of what I believe about myself? It's another my layer. Fears, my survival fears? It could be that, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, and... Okay, and another thing that I should say, as Ruth, is that when we come to know inner beings as a certain in a certain way in a certain energy with they may look a certain way or we may hear them a certain way or see them a certain way but they change as you change in your perception and the fears that you have dropping them and expressing yourself and live, living spontaneously then you change how you perceive inner reality. So you change how you perceive those others that you communicate within inner reality. So let's say, for instance, for the first uh, 49 years of my life, I, my spiritual guide was my grandfather that I never met in, this, in physical reality because he died before I was born. So my grandfather appeared to me my whole life and just last year or just in this last year, what happens was he came to me and he says, you don't need me anymore. And he says, in fact, I'm you, you are me. So you're not losing me. You're gaining me. You don't need me outside of yourself anymore. Yeah. I had, I've, I've had some of the same same experience with Gary arguing kind of back and forth, but he basically said, well, you know, there's no way I can leave you because I'm part of you and I'm in there. That, you know, it's not, there's no, there's no separation of any kind. There's, yes. um. Yes, the the separation so then is the fear. Different, I guess we're talking about two different things. Um, yeah, we're talking about two different things, yeah. Yeah, it's not him that's the problem. It's the survival fears. It's my my fear of how I'm going to... How are you going well, to survive I without think that, him? I think it's time to uh, to move on to another caller. Uh, I'm sorry uh, to break this up, but it's, you know, it's getting uh, past the time when the show usually ends. And we do have one more caller on hold. So um, okay. I'm going to, yeah, I, I'm going to let this uh, be for another time. And uh, thanks, Anne, for calling in and bearing okay. yourself in that way. Um, I think she hung up. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Okay, Anne. thank you for calling um, in. Yeah. Uh, we do have one more caller uh, from 910. You've been very patient waiting here. Are you there, 910? Yes, I'm here, Dana. Hi. I noticed you had a first caller 911 area code. Yeah, popular. there was another 911. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Hi. Hey. I recently had to part ways with a dear friend, and I'm dealing with the heartbreak and the grief from this, and it really has me stuck. And I'm wondering if you might. Enlighten me there. Oh, help me out, Daniel. Oh, did you not hear what she said? 
I didn't quite understand what she said. Okay. Can you repeat the question, caller? Yes. I just had to part ways with this dear friend. Um, kept trying to make it work, but today we just said it's not working. Um, part, parting we, ways with a dear friend. Yeah, yeah. she's all oh. pain of it all. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, how to deal? So, so breaking up with a friend is, the, is the, what the question's about. Uh, okay, the reason right? why? The reason why? Or well, like the first caller said, the, the, the depression and the grief from it all. Yeah. Dealing with that emotion, being stuck. <laughs> she's feeling, she's feeling grief about it. Grief and, depression and loss. about about the friend. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's enough. They're here, yeah. <laughs> They're here. Uh-huh. Sometimes, yeah, we have to go on with a question or express more so that they can focus on the, the question, the caller, focus on that energy. So, yeah, they're here. The Okay, they're confusing about who's going to answer. Emmanuel wants to come up. The loss and grief of a loved one. Whether you argue and fight or leave amicably. most always signifies in you the idea that you have lost part of yourself, that you have forsaken a part of yourself in order to move on. It is this grief, the grief of having the other represent yourself to yourself. You see, when you have friends around you and family members and other beings around you, they all represent a portion of your personality. They all represent part of yourself, a part of yourself that you will not or cannot present to others. You just place it upon the other, and it is reflected back to you. That's not saying that the other is not an individual and has their own individual nature. But you are indeed reflecting back to them their own personality. So it is when another leaves you that you find that the separation you have with yourself is lacking. It is this that the grief and the loss is attached to. But understand that as you change, and you will change with each moment that passes, your experiences change, your thoughts change, and your emotion changes, and you change with that. You drop fears, and you assume new fears. You drop beliefs and assume new beliefs. You change what it is you think about yourself based upon your human experience. Whether you are locked in a room with padded walls or you live outside of any structure for most of the year, you change based upon your experience. And those changes bring to you individuals And as you change yourself, some individuals leave you, and you move on to new ones. Because yourself has changed, you need someone new to describe part of yourself. This is why in your personal relationships, your relationships change over time. Because both of you change your individual self. What you see in the other changes over time.
and you say, well, the other fought his way away from you. And we say, yes, you'd fight change at every turn. You still hold the fear that change is bad. If you will just simply think the thought that change is normal, that change is good, that change is what you are, it is the state of the energy that makes up the you that you really are, that when others leave you, you will be happy for them because they have also changed. When you greet new people, you will be happy that you did greet the new people because that means that they have also changed. Grief and loss is really about you because you're expressing the emotion. You're expressing the loss and the grief And we suggest that you take those emotions, those fleeting emotions, and ride with them to their supposed end. Ride with them to quickly reach the place of the new you. If you are stuck in grief and loss and stuck in those emotions, and they seem to loop through each other back at you, back at yourself, which you are doing, and please take this with the love that we intend. You are looping that grief and that loss back at yourself. You are shaming yourself with the violence of grief and loss. You are comfortable with that state of shame. But you have the ability to recognize that that shame is unreasonable. That grief and loss are a reaction to the change that you perceive as bad. Experience the grief and the loss and let them go. However you need to experience them, however you need to experience and express them, let them go. They will not hurt you. Let them go. The shame then will dissolve. And you will open up the door of the love that you are. In this case, you will crack the door. And that cracked door will illuminate more of yourself and more of the violent emotions that you are directing back at yourself. And you will discover more and more of what you believe about yourself. And you will accept change as who you are. And this will relieve you from those emotions. And that was uh, such a beautiful answer. Oh yes, that was okay. Yeah, that, that was, was so Emmanuel, good. So. Yeah, Emmanuel. Wow, so great to connect with all these beings that you channel and and to connect with you tonight, Ruth. And thank you, caller. I don't think we got your name, but uh, thank you for your question and for whole everyone else. Yes, thank, thank you for you listening. For... I, I know there were a lot of people listening uh, in the 
Consciousness Evolution 2.0 group tonight. So thank you all. And uh, Ruth, I would love to have you on again sometime because that was fascinating. And uh, Oh, okay. That would be great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would love to have you on the show again. You, your uh, channeling is really good, and I'm I'm really happy for you. And uh, oh yeah, let's oh, mention you. your website. Let's uh, let's okay. plug your website. So it's yes, psychicbroadband. Dot com. Dot com. Psychicbroadband. Dot yes. com. That's Ruth's website. You can get readings with Ruth, and she teaches channeling and. Uh, got recordings yes. on there and and all sorts of good stuff, right? Yes. Yes. And I have so. I uh I do sessions and um I do card readings and I do sessions um uh, when I get online again sometime in the next century, I could um <laughs> I do Skype sessions <laughs> and uh all that. Yeah, I want to thank mm-hmm. you Daniel cuz you you gave me um a, some of my confidence back. Thank you. Well, I thought uh, you did amazingly well tonight and uh, took a lot of questions, and uh, it was really great to have you on. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, so I had a really good time. Happy I got to meet you tonight, uh, <laughs> other than, you know, through the Facebook <laughs> portal. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, so uh, once again... Um, I just appreciate having you on the show, and I'll have you back sometime. Okay. All right. And um, uh, so now uh, I'm just going to tell you all about uh, next week's show. Good night, Ruth. Good night. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to tell you all that next week I'll be in Maui uh, and uh, and then traveling to Oahu, so I will be uh, not doing the show next week, but my lovely wife, Lana, will be taking over. And she'll be doing a show on uh, making a living by following your highest excitement in every moment. So, uh, yes, I got that right. That's going to be her theme next week, so you can tune in and listen to Lana. And now here are the announcements for the rest of the network. I've never done this before. Let me see how it works. Hi, this is Karen Newman from the show About Oneness. And here's what's coming up on the week starting on Monday, December the 8th, until Sunday, December the 14th, on the Enlightenment Evolution Network 1 and 2. Simply put, Rob Gatier, founder of the EEN and the host of the show that started it all, the Enlightenment Evolution Hour, has put together the greatest metaphysical radio network ever. Seven days a week, we have shows that will aid you on your path to enlightenment, evolution, and ascension. On EEN1, Monday night, 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, is Heart to Heart Talk Radio with your host, Daniel Scranton. Join Daniel and his featured guests discussing a wide variety of metaphysical topics. Daniel channels the creators, the Hathors, Ophelia the Fairy, Archangel Michael, and the latest, the Unicorn Collective. Daniel and his guests will take phone calls and questions and it's sure to generate high-frequency discussions. You can find more information about Daniel at his website, danielscranton.com, and also on Facebook. Go to the Events tab on Daniel's website to learn more about Daniel's upcoming events. Daniel's guest on Monday, December the 8th, is Misty Shilva Jenian. She is a life coach. She has a life coach certification program that she created, and she teaches you how to access your intuition. She will be talking with Daniel about her work, her spiritual journey, and the current state of the shift. She will be online live taking questions. On Tuesdays at noon Pacific Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, please join hosts Megan Crandomeyer and Rachel Archelaus for radio inspiration, expression, and abundance for their show, Soulfulpreneur. Spiritual business specialists Rachel and Megan will bring you inspiring conversations with people who are living their soul purpose. Frequent guests include psychic mediums, channelers, coaches, artists, and authors. They end every show with psychic readings and business coaching. Your questions about your spiritual business or life purpose journey are welcome. Wednesday nights, 
9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, is the show that started it all, the Enlightenment Evolution Hour with host Rob Gauthier. Rob channels Treb on the first Wednesday of each month and will take callers' questions. On the third Wednesday, he will have special guests such as guest channelers and other metaphysical teachers. The other two Wednesdays are freestyle call-in shows to discuss whatever callers have on their mind. Tune in to Rob on Wednesday nights, and you can also find him on TrebChanneling.com and on Facebook at the Enlightenment Evolution Network group page. Rob Gassier's upcoming events are... On January 3rd, 2015, is an online interactive event called the Advanced Density Masterclass 2.0, where Rob will channel Aradif, the ancient Pleiadian, for the most profound information about densities, dimensions, and all things of the universe. This is a live online interactive event that will be accessible from all devices, PC, and Macs around the world. On April the 3rd, 2015, you can spend three days with Treb and Aradif in Asheville, North Carolina during the lunar eclipse, Learning to Channel. Only 30 spots available. Please go to TrebChanneling.com to sign up and for details. Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific. Join host Philip Malika with the Consciousness Evolution Hour. Join Philip and his special guests and co-hosts as they discuss the shift, ascension, timelines, metaphysical concepts, and the fifth dimension. Find Philip at the Consciousness Evolution 2.0 group page on Facebook and on YouTube. Fridays, the Earth Experience with Kalina Angel, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific. The Earth Experience explores our soul's expansion through our human experiences on Earth. Kalina will help you to navigate and expand through the exciting confusions we are manifesting as new 5D beings. On Saturdays, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Victoria Vives hosts Earth Sky People Radio, awakening to an intergalactic society, bringing you to greater awareness regarding star seeds and extraterrestrial life, living in harmony with one another and Mother Earth and with life beyond Earth, the Interstellar Alliance or Planet Earth becoming part of an intergalactic society. The transformative power of music, frequency and sound, shamanism, ancestral wisdom and star nations self-sustained and regenerative living, and much, much more. Victoria's guest on December 13th will be Rob Gautier, channeling Aradip, the wise ancient Pleiadian being from Deneb. There will be a Q&A section at the end. On Sundays, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Pacific, is my show about oneness. About Oneness is a weekly radio program focused on celebrating the ongoing conscious awakening of our planet and a realization of oneness. My guest on December the 14th is Crystal Vandenacker from the Netherlands. She will be online live and we will be discussing the upcoming energies of 2015. If you would like to learn more about me and my show, you can go to aboutoneness.com where there will be many videos of channelings and teaching as well as my upcoming guests. On the EEN Network 2. On Saturday evenings, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, the Pied Piper and Texas Rebel hosting Disclosure Now. Disclosure Now is the the on-the-edge-of-our-seat show that covers all topics of disclosure, from the world's most famous and obscure UFO cases to cryptozoology, conspiracies, and all things that go bump in the night. Pied Piper started his journey in Michigan in 1993 as a preteen seeing Bigfoot and never could get enough of investigating all things paranormal. Texas Rebel is a wild Texas man who loves the same journey and has studied these same things for years. Join them as they cover all things in the human experience that can just not be answered by anyone. And coming soon to the Enlightenment Evolution Network will be The Resonance Intention, hosted by Neil and Soul Bar. The show will be on Sundays, starting at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Pacific. The Resonance Intention is a show dedicated to all things frequency and vibration. They will showcase conscious musicians who infuse frequencies into their music and have set out to uplift and raise the vibration of humanity through their music. 
They will have in-depth discussions with various artists about their passion, purpose, and personal journey that led them to where they are now. Additionally, they will routinely have guests on the topics of free energy, technology, and other quantum modalities, technologies that are coming into existence now. The Residence Intention is a platform for artists, musicians, and inventors to increase their awareness of their personal approach in order to contribute to the paradigm shift that we are currently within. And remember, you never have to miss any show on the Enlightenment Evolution Network 1 or 2. All shows are available to listen to again on Blog Talk Radio immediately after they air on playback. Or you can go to the Enlightenment Evolution Network YouTube page and listen to any of the shows from the network. All right, back to the show. All right, and that's it for me tonight. And thank you for staying tuned through all of that. And uh, I will see you guys again in two weeks when my guest will be Rob Gothier. And next week, it'll be my lovely wife, Lana, stepping in and hosting her own show here about making a living by following your excitement in every moment. Good night, everyone. I love you. This is Daniel signing off. <laughs>